I'm gonna be really honest with you. From everything that I've heard about this game, I really did not expect anything major from it. But like from a lot of things in your life, you just need to give it one chance and boy, I was happy that I did. And today in this video, we're gonna be talking about Chorus, an indie space shooter that came out in 2021 and was a really big surprise for me. So let's get it started. So what is Chorus? Chorus is basically an analog of the games like Everspace or an arcade version of Elite Dangerous. Gameplay wise, you're basically controlling a spaceship in very arcadey manner in a semi-open world. And by semi-open world, I mean that the world is actually divided into a few different regions and within these regions you're absolutely free to move and free to do the quests and the missions and everything that you want at first when i thought this game i thought that this would be some kind of linear action shooter which is story driven but in reality it is more of an rpg than just an arcade shooter and plot wise you're playing in this futuristic world which is divided into two different parts one is controlled by a cult which is, well, fanatic religious organization that wants to eradicate everyone that is not them. Or well, basically some kind of space crusaders. And there are also uh, basically rebels, which are surviving in a different enclaves. There, and there are also pirates. And you are playing as Nara. You are an ex-member of cult and you are basically some kind of chosen individual who has, well, let's say powers you were one of the elite executioners but during one of the missions you were given an order to execute the entire planet and well weirdly enough you actually did that and then you got sad and then you decided to abandon the cult that's basically the story that you were given within the first 30 seconds of the game and now you're basically hiding within those smaller enclaves and no one no one really knows who you are and you're trying to well stay away from everything by just doing a small escort missions and just very very minor thing and at first when i actually saw the first marketing of this game well i really didn't know what was this game actually all about and really didn't understand anything and yes game did not have a very good marketing and as i started playing the game i'm gonna be really honest with you first 30 minutes to an hour i really didn't like what i was seeing the presentation of this game was very dreadful very slow and you are just given a plot dump on you and you really need to make sense of all and i did i didn't like what i was seeing however as soon as i got to an open world which you are getting very very quickly and very very soon and as soon as i started seeing the different missions i kind of liked this game i kind of i kind of liked the gameplay of this game and you can really understand that this game is actually created by people whose first priority was to create fun game and not just a story for the sake of having a story. The gameplay of this game is actually pretty interesting and pretty fun. Well, to give you a real like, short breakdown of what you actually do, the game has a central storyline. And when you go through the storyline and go through different regions, make different missions as you progress through the game. However, you are not actually forced to do any of the story missions as soon as you can. Within the regions and within an open world, you can just roam around and discover different encounters, basically side quests and side missions, and you can actually accept to do them and you can actually deny to do them. And whether you will actually do them or not actually affects your story as well, because you're getting a lot of great upgrades to your ship and to yourself through those missions and weirdly enough the side quests were pretty varied and pretty different and it was not as simple just go and kill x number of enemies like in one mission which is one of the first side missions you are actually given a control of small cruiser which has completely different control compared to your ship and you are basically controlled this giant this large ship full of civilians and try to get through the waves of pirates it's, it was pretty interesting and a lot of those side quests are actually pretty interesting and pretty fun to listen and just go through entire uh, and go through them and as you go through the quest you actually unlock your ship well it's kind of like a spoiler but you're gonna just unlock this within the first hour and it's extremely important for overall gameplay so i'm just gonna spoil it to you right now you are actually unlocking a special ship which you're gonna which is called forsaken or you call it forza and this is actually a sentient ship and it has it has its own personality and it is 
trying to work with you during this game. No, you're not. It's, it's not a separate entity. You are controlling the ship. You are actually trying to improve the relations with the ship because it was because it was your friend in the past and you abandoned it. And it was it, it's pretty interesting to see the dynamic between Nara and the Forza. And as you go to your story, you also unlock so-called rights. And these rights are basically a skills. A magical skill, if you want to call it, because you were a powerful executioner and you had this some kind of magic in you as well. Do not spoil these rights to you because they're pretty interesting. I'm going to just tell you what one of them does. Uh, and one of them is basically giving you a power of teleportation. You're basically teleporting behind an enemy while finding and you can just destroy them while by chasing them. And it's, it's not a simple dogfight where you have to circle on a single point to just try to get them and just try to improve your ship and just make a maneuvers to just get them as soon as possible. It's not like that. And with these skills and abilities, the gameplay is actually surprisingly fun and refreshing. And you're going through this open world, going through this different regions, unlocking different quests, helping different people, go progressing through the main quest. And I was surprised enough how game is actually opening from so, so story and gameplay wise to extremely fun and interesting within just a few hours. I was pleasantly surprised how much fun this game actually gave me. By the way, this game only has a single player and you can only go through the campaign. And as difficulty wise, this game is actually pretty good in giving you sufficient enough challenge to not make it extremely easy and also giving you enough sense of power to see that you're actually some kind of well powerful entity. And yeah, on normal difficulty, I even, I, I even managed to die quite a few times even during the first few hours of the game. And as you progress through the game, the game is actually becoming progressively difficult. You are also becoming progressively stronger as well, but the game is dif becoming proportionally difficult as well. And it's extremely fun to do all of those dogfights and just do all of those puzzles as well. Because yeah, game is featuring a lot of puzzles as well. It's very difficult to talk about this game without actually spoiling a lot of things because Game is not very, very long, but it's actually long enough to keep you entertained. So if you if you go through the main story, if you go just go zoom through the main story without doing anything else, you'll probably need around 10 to 15 hours to complete this game, which, which was pretty good enough. However, if you're just doing a side quest as well and just having fun, taking your time, enjoying the world, listening to dialogue, just going through, just enjoying the game, the game is easily 25 to 30 hours. But now, as always, question is this, is it actually worth it? And to understand this, let's talk about pricing first. So game is actually available on Steam and it's also available on consoles as well for the base price of $39.99 for tier one countries and $18.99 for tier two countries. And at the moment of the recording of the video, game is pretty new. So there were, a, there were no any substantial sales going on, at least not on Steam. And I'm gonna be open and transparent with you here. I actually got this game for free from the developer itself. However, I'm not sponsored. And everything that I've said before and that I will say right now is purely my own opinion. So again, is this game worth it for that price? I I've always said that I'm a very cheap gamer. I'm trying to get the games as cheap as I can. And well, I very rarely, very, very rarely buy this game for $40. I will not lie to you. If I had a $40, right now and i was given a choice to buy this game or not without no without actually knowing anything about this game without actually playing this game first i'll probably not buy this game because the marketing of this game was pretty simply non-existent no one talked about this game this was actually very 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 niche and very small game and i can understand actually why the game is actually made by a very very small development team and you can see when you play this game that absolute absolute majority of the budget went into actually crafting a gameplay, not the marketing. And it's very commendable, but but marketing is actually pretty important for the games too. And I guess that's what I'm doing here right now. And to talk about the flaws of the game, this game is now, of, of course, not flawless. And I'm going to be talking about the biggest flaw that I encountered through this game. And it's its presentation and its attention to details. No, I'm not talking about the gameplay. Gameplay wise, game is actually pretty superb. I would probably rate this game if you're gonna talk about only gameplay and only, and considering its genre, the gameplay is probably like at least eight or probably nine out of 10. It's superb, it's pretty fun, it's pretty interesting. The overall story of the game is pretty good as well. I would also rate eight or nine out of 10. And just to give you a very short plot, uh, it's 
what if a Sith, one of the most powerful Sith, maybe even like Darth Vader, just defected from an empire and just went go to and went to go and kill an empire. That's basically a story of the game. Of course, it's pretty different from that, but yeah, it's just a very short premise. But the problem with this game is in its presentation. As soon as you will start playing the game, it will be extremely confusing because you will see that the developers spend a lot of time in voice acting, but an actual presentation of the game is, well, not that interesting. The game is not very cinematic. Even the cutscenes that are very few and very far in between are not that great. Well, like at least at, with the standards of 2021, 2022. And you will and you will be feeling that very early on. That the presentation of the game is not that great. This is the first thing that I realized when I started playing this game. However, the gameplay and the, really the story itself actually overshadows this presentation and basically wipes it clean. But you need to understand that if you are looking into very good presentation, well, it's not here in this game. And that's where the price falls in here as well. Because the only way to find out whether the game is actually good or not is to just play it and it's extremely difficult to understand it's from a marketing material which is basically non-existent and from just videos like that as well it's very difficult to recommend this game for the full price even though i think right now after playing this game it's actually worth four dollars however again it's very difficult to recommend each and every one of you to get this game for the full price it's very difficult to do so for 18.99 for tier 2 full price it's absolutely worth it if you can get this game for that price it is worth it but maybe not for 40 dollars so should you wait for sales and what price you should get this game for so if the price will be anywhere close to 30 dollars maybe a little more maybe a little less and if you played any space arcade games and and you don't want a space simulation because no it's not a simulation it's basically magic in space for a price around 20 dollars this game is absolutely worth it you're gonna find a lot of enjoyment if you are going to struggle through this presentation problem because overall because the story and gameplay in this game is superb and if sometime in the future you'll find this game for around 10 dollars go and get it you are not going to regret this for 10 dollars this game is worth it any day of the week it's absolutely amazing I'm really blown away how this game just flew under the radar of everyone. Because, yeah, it's simply fantastic. I just love this game and I really think that it is absolutely worth it. Overall, the conclusion is this. For $40, it's very difficult to recommend and I probably would not recommend it to you. For somewhere close to $20, if you're a fan of the genre, it is the must play. And for closer to $10, it is a must play for basically everyone. Well, I guess this will be it for today. Let me know in the comments down below. Have you heard about Chorus before? And what did you think when you first find out about this game? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And I'm going to see you in the next one. See ya.